What did Anita Ward say? Something about ringing my bell? <laughs> this is my aluminum bell. I cast this. It actually, uh, you know, it's not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible. I am going to, today we're going to make uh, this that same bell. I'm going to make it out of bell bronze or bell metal or uh, tin bronze. It's, a, it's an 80% copper, 20% tin uh, alloy that I've put together. And... Um, it's, and that's by weight, so it's, you know, like, it would be like two grams of tin and eight grams of copper to make 10 grams of bronze. And that's what we're going to use for the, um, for the bell. We're going to do some things a little bit differently than you've seen with other bells. If you watch my aluminum bell, maybe not. But if you watch other bell casters, I call myself a bell caster. <laughs> I am a guy that's casting a bell. I don't think that makes me a bell caster. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do some things a little different, and I'll explain them along the way. Okay, so uh, I told you I was going to do something a little, a little bit differently than traditional bell pours. Uh, most bell pours, when you see them, they pour down um, and from the top, and then the metal flows down around the sides and then comes back up to the top. Just like you were filling a glass, right? I mean, same kind of idea. You pour it in, and as, it, as, it more, as more and more material gets to the bottom, it just rises up and up. We're going to do it a little differently. We're going to pour um, from the bottom. I am going to sprue in right about here or so from the top. And then in the, in, 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 the, uh, in the drag, I'm going to cut some runners that come into the bottom or some gates from the bottom. And the metal's going to come down all the way to the bottom, come into enter the enter the part, and then flow up and fill from the bottom up. Hopefully we get a nice solid fill that way because we're not introducing turbulence, we're not introducing air into the system. Uh, we're trying to minimize that anyway by, by using the tapered sprue, the, filling ba the pouring basin that I'm going to show you. All of that will help put a nice, smooth, laminar flow of metal into the bell. Let's get her started. All right, so let me stop um, right here. My regular subs and viewers have seen this a million times, but if you're new, um, let me just talk about what I'm doing here. I'm cutting a pouring basin uh, into the top of the mold. And my basin is going to be about 30 millimeters deep, okay? Plus or minus 15. <laughs> Pretty close to 30. Pretty close to 30. I, you know, obviously, you see, I didn't, I didn't measure it, but um, we're pretty close. Cut that out just a little bit more. Just to clean up the bottom edge. So now what we've got is a nice round, flat-bottomed pouring basin. Not a spoon shape. Not a bowl shape. Nice flat bottom basin. We're going to cut um, a ridge between the sprue and that basin. And this is going to end up being fairly deep, um, almost probably about 10 millimeters off the bottom, maybe um, 20 millimeters from the top. 
And from my understanding of this is that you want the metal to come into the basin, splash whatever it's going to do when it hits that basin, fill, start filling the basin, and then it's going to run over the top of this ridge. And we want to keep the uh, we want to keep the uh, the metal flowing over the ridge. We don't ever want this to starve. We want it to just keep that sprue full and um, keep the metal flowing nice and smooth without any turbulence, without any air being sucked down the hole. Now, I rounded it off so we have a nice smooth flow over the top. That was the other thing I just did. So that's it. That's how we're going to pour into it. We're going to pour into here. It's going to fill. It's going to run over the top, run down the, run down the hole. The, um, the part that I pulled out of here is not, it's more, for, it's more for my benefit just to see what's going on um, because uh, I want to be able to see the metal coming up inside. It's too small to be a feeder and it's too big to be a vent. So it's just, but it's perfect for me to be able to look down inside. Alrighty, so that's that. Let's go ahead and get this thing flipped over, and we'll put the uh, we'll put the drag on. I put a board on the bottom of this guy just so when I flip it over, just to keep the pattern from falling out. Uh, there's nothing worse than having it, you getting halfway through and have the pattern fall out, and then you got to try to figure out a way to get it back in there. So that's why the board's on the bottom. Those little ribs that I had in the bottom of my box should help hold the sand in. I'm just going to mark my sprue just by doing that. Alrighty, we are <laughs> we are really heavy. That's what we are right now. We're going to try to flip this thing all the way over again. Um, lift the get these things out of the way. We're going to lift the uh, uh, lift the cope and cut our gates. And we're also going to uh, put our logo in. See if we can't pull that off. So let's. Uh, If we can't turn this thing over, like so, there's halfway, <laughs> and there's all the way. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted, but it'll do. It's actually kind of hoping that the part, the pattern would stay on the, in the drag, but it didn't. And you notice that I have, uh, I must not have rammed it hard enough because I've got lumps and stuff in here that are, I mean, hopefully it's rammed hard now, but there is my sprue, a mark that I made for the sprue. So we're going to cut a, uh, a runner across the bottom of that, perpendicular to where we're going to flow to. And then I'm going to come in and about here, right into the bottom edge of the bell. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Try to cut it in pretty close to the same spot. That's it. It's 
all we have to do for, come on. Pull this stuff out of here. And we'll see if we can't clean this guy up just a little bit. I don't want any loose sand rearing its ugly head. I can help it. I'll just tamp that down. Blow it out again. Try not to crush the top of my belt like I just touched it. All right. Now then. I got to get that guy out of there now. Feels reasonably loose. You know that little blowhole I put in the top might actually come in handy here. Let's see. It did. All right, last step is to try to get my logo pressed into the side of the bell. I'm going to go ahead and talk, the, talk this thing up quite a bit. Um, actually talk that up a lot. This is always a tricky spot part. Trying to get this thing on here and right in the, the right orientation, right location. And we're going to go right, oh come on, right there. And we're going to just press. So now it's, that's how they do, that's how the real boys do it. Hmm. Not bad. I've seen better though. Okay, now well, let's see if we can't get this guy back on here. <laughs> ah. No easy way of doing this. Just the walk in front of you. Kick the camera. Alright, there we go. Hope those guided it down nice and neat. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. So I'm going to call it good. I'm not going to try to lift it again. We're just going to call it good and we're going to melt with some bronze and pour it in there. Okay, let's hope for the best. Throw the base on, keep the sprue running. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, man. I screwed up. I screwed up, kids. Now that was a lesson in exactly not what to do. Keep the basin full. Keep the spool running. Don't stop and start like I just did. That was, God, I can't believe how many bad things I just did right there. The problem happened. The problem was, as I was filling this thing, it stopped. It, it backed up on me, it wasn't running, and it filled the basin, it overflowed, so I backed off thinking it was coming up full. Then it drained and I filled it up again, and uh, you know, we'll see what we got. Oh, I'm disappointed in myself on that one. Let's see if we can get this thing off of here and uh, get it looked at. Man, it is heavy. Oh, 
it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can move it around here and we can break it out of there. Okay. Let's, uh, it don't look bad. It don't look bad. I may have gotten really, really lucky. Ah, shoot. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. That's hot. Couple of lines, probably where I stopped and started. Yeah, interesting line right there. Probably where I stopped and started the, the pour. But it's a whole bell. So we're going to count that good, I think. Alrighty, here we go. There's the aluminum one, there's the bronze one. And uh, we're going to polish this thing up in a little bit and see if I can't. Get rid of this line. Um, I, it's unfortunate that it's on. Um, it's actually inside and outside. So I assume that that means, even though it's just a burn line, it looks like probably not the best adhesion between these guys. I don't know. I don't know. Logo came out pretty good. You can't really see it too much yet, but it is. It did come out pretty good. Eighteen hundred grams. Five hundred twenty-seven grams. Is a little bit heavier. So, shall we see what they sound like? All right, here we go. Aluminum bell. No sustain. Kind of goes clunk. Not a real pleasant tone either. Bell bronze. There, lots of sustain, much more pleasing tone. It's not that perfect, but I mean, it sounds pretty good. And look at that. Just goes to show you, it rings in different places. And it's got different tones coming off the different parts of the bell. Cool thing about bells, isn't that? Look at that. High frequency, lower frequency. Bet you didn't know that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and polish this thing up. I'll come back and do one last reveal. Even though I even did it, it worked. All right, clearly a case of uh, do what I say and not what I do. <laughs> anyway, there it is, kind of sort of polished up. I just ran it on the buffing wheel for just a few minutes just to clean it up a little bit, make it shine, and do anything with the inside. Nice little logo on there. One more time. What do you think? Just keeps ringing and ringing, ringing. So there you go. You can make a bell at home. You can make it out of bell bronze. I did it. Um, and it sounds remarkably better than aluminum. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll make an aluminum bronze one just to see how bad it sounds. I don't think it'll sound anywhere near as good as this. So. That's it. You guys have a great day.